Can you do time lapses in Lightroom? Yes, you can. Have you ever been out shooting somewhere and you realize, wow, this would make a really great time lapse? Um, say you're out shooting sunset or you're out in the middle of the day and just something magical is happening in the skyline and you thought to yourself wow this would be really cool to set my camera up and do a really awesome time lapse of this scene well it's not as hard as you think um, you don't need expensive software to get it done for you, you don't necessarily need third-party apps um, and you can use your DSLR and that's what I'm going to show you today uh, if you already have um, Lightroom CC, or any version of Lightroom for that matter, um, you can use the slideshow module in Lightroom to facilitate almost all of your time-lapse needs. So there's just a couple things that you need before you start. Actually, there's only really one thing that you need, and it's this. Um, this is a timer remote control. I shoot Canon, but somehow I ended up with a Nikon one. I don't know. Um, I don't actually use this one, obviously. This is just a spare and really just to kind of show you what you need. But this remote is very specific for time lapses. Um, has a little LCD screen on here. And that LCD screen allows you to program the camera to take multiple shots um, it, over and over and over and over again. Um, until either your battery runs out or until you tell the timer to stop. So that's really the only thing you need when you're doing time lapses is, is an intervalometer or a timer remote control. You can get them all over the place. There's a million third party um, products that you can buy on Amazon. There's also um, camera specific ones that you can buy. You know, if you shoot like a Canon, Nikon, or Sony, um, they all make their own, but it's a timer remote control. So that's really it. Just that one thing is all you need. And obviously Lightroom. Um, we can't play around there. Um, so this is what you're going to do. Um, you're going to grab your intervalometer. You're going to grab your camera. You're going to go out and you're going to pick a subject. Um, I have an example here of about a thousand pictures that I took in Iceland um, of these clouds rolling in um, with um, the old DC-3 plane that's um, on the volcanic beach. Um, and there wasn't a really rhyme or reason for it to me. I just wanted to get out there, take a time lapse and just see what happened. If I'm gonna take a time lapse and my video project is in 24 frames per second, well, that means that if I wanna take a 10 second time lapse, I need 240 photos, right? So 10 seconds times 24 frames a second gives me 240. If my video project is 30 frames a second, then I need 300 photos, right? So that's 10 seconds times 30 frames a second gives you 300, okay? Once we have that done, the only thing left to do is to go out and capture the photos, okay? So that's where we bring everything into Lightroom. So we're gonna load up Lightroom, we're gonna import our photos, and you can see here on my screen that I have um, my Iceland plane time-lapse uh, in a folder already ready to go. So there's a thousand and five images here. I'm not sure the interval that I use between these. It was just on aperture priority, which is not the best thing to use um, for using shooting time lapses, but it's not the end of the world if you do, if you just want to get started. Um, totally okay to do. Typically though, you'd want to use a manual setting so that the exposure doesn't change from shot to shot, especially if the lighting is changing. Um, there's a weird phenomenon that happens when the camera has to you know, ramp up its exposure between shots, you get this weird thing called flickering, which is what some of the more advanced programs uh, do away with. They can help you get rid of that flickering. But if your exposure across all of the images in your time lapse remains relatively the same, you don't really need to worry about that. And that's kind of what I have here. I don't have too much variation between the exposures, so the, the time lapse kind of works um, without flickering. I don't notice any flickering. Please tell me in the comments um, if you see flickering. Either way, we're in Lightroom, um, we have all the images, and I've gone ahead and separated them, I put them into um, their own collection. So once I have them in that collection, really the next step is to go to the develop module, and you can see here that um, 
the photos are still in a two by three format, right? So if you're shooting with uh, a DSLR, um, most likely they're gonna be in a two by three format. Micro Four Thirds is gonna give you a four by three format, so more of a square. But the problem is, is that if you're going to be using this footage in an already existing video, right? You're gonna drag this footage into a video. Um, you're not gonna have the luxury of having it in a two by three or four by three format. Most likely, your video is going to be in a 16 by nine format, which is typical for most HD stuff, right? If you go on YouTube, if you're watching this video on YouTube, the video was captured at 1920 by 1080. Actually, I did that backwards. 19, no, 1920 by 1080, right? So that's full HD or, or higher than a DVD quality. Blu-ray would be um, that. And it's most likely gonna be 16 by nine. That's the aspect ratio. So the only thing I really am going to do with these photos is I'm gonna, I need to process them just a little tiny bit, right? So uh, when in the develop module, you're gonna hold Command A or Control A on a PC to select every photo in your timeline. Once you have every photo selected in your timeline, what you can do is you can navigate over to the bottom left hand or right hand corner of your screen, excuse me, and right next to the reset button, you're gonna see um, this area that says sync. Now, we are gonna sync these photos, but if you don't wanna have to press the sync button and then select what you want to sync, all you need to do is just flick this little light switch right here um, to the left of the sync button. And now you'll see that the button says auto sync. What that means is that when we make a correction to the photo that's on screen, that will also happen to every photo that I've selected. So all 1,005 photos are gonna have that process that exists on this screen, okay? Or on this photo that's displayed right now. So the first thing to do, once we have them all selected, is to go up to the crop tool, and we're gonna crop this to a 16 by nine picture, right? I'm not gonna have the slideshow do that because the slideshow, if I tell it to crop automatically, it's just gonna pick something in the middle, and I don't want that. Um, if, if I do this, I'm gonna come up to my um, crop tool here, and then where it says original right here, I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna select 16 by nine, right? And you'll see that it does this like right across the board to every photo, it's gonna crop it right in the middle and I don't want that. So I'm gonna take this crop box and I'm gonna drag it to the bottom. Now I should mention this, um, although I shouldn't really have to, you should be on a tripod and the camera should not be moving at all. Um, unless you have some kind of a machine that's gonna rotate the camera automatically for you. Um, that's going to be a little bit more difficult to process. Um, if it's going from left to right, that's okay, but up and down, it might be a little tougher. So this is, again, just for basic static shots, right? So I'm going to come down, I'm going to crop this to a 16 by 9, just the way it is here, and then I'm going to click Done. So now every photo is going to be cropped exactly the same way with that plane in the exact same spot. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, and this is completely up to you, you don't have to if you don't want to, you might want to go to lens corrections and then remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Um, that might be something you could do. I'm going to not do one of these. I'm going to go to the, uh, I'm going to go down here to the bottom of the profile corrections and I'm going to take the vignetting slider and I'm going to push it all the way to zero. I don't want Lightroom to correct for the vignetting of the lens. That's important to me because I like the natural vignetting that you get. Um, I do wanna correct for the chromatic aberration um, and maybe the distortion, but I don't wanna correct for the vignetting. So that's just that's just for me. The next step is you, know, you can come back up to basic and you can adjust the white balance if you want. Now I shot these images in JPEG um, so that I didn't have to deal with a thousand raw images on my card and process a thousand raw images. Um, and then export a thousand raw images. So I shot them all in, I think, medium JPEG, um, and that's fine for my purposes. Um, I don't really uh, care all that much um, <clears throat> because uh, it's just taking up less space. And, and I'm, I didn't really know how long I was gonna leave the camera on. Um, it turned out, be, turned out to be about four hours. Um, so keeping it in medium JPEG, excuse me, um, was the way to go for me. Uh, okay, so setting the white balance correct, getting all that done was done in camera, so I don't need to do that here in Lightroom. I'm just gonna do those three adjustments, cropping, chromatic aberration, and distortion correction. Again, no vignetting. And then the next step is to come over to the slideshow. And when we come over to the slideshow, um, we need to import a preset. 
Um, Lightroom by default has a minimum of one second that each photo needs to be on screen. Obviously that doesn't work because we wanna shoot at either 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second, depending on what you know, how you're dis distributing this video. Um, so for these purposes, uh, for this video, we're gonna do 24 frames a second. That's what this video is being shot on and that's how I'm gonna insert it into this video. So we need a preset, um, some way to tell Lightroom to bring all of these images one next to the other super fast, right? 24 in a second. And the only way to do that is to have a preset. So what you need to do is you need to go to the video description in, in this video, um, and you need to download the preset zip file. Once you download that preset zip file, all you need to do is unzip it anywhere on your computer, and then in the slideshow module, you're gonna import them right into your template browser. So if we look on the left-hand side of your slideshow uh, module, you'll see there's a template browser right here. And mine says time-lapse because I've already done this before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say delete folder, okay? And we'll do this from scratch. So all I need to do is I'm gonna go to user templates and I'm gonna say new folder. I'm gonna name this folder um, time-lapse, time-lapse and then I'm gonna hit create. And now if I click on this little arrow here and drop that folder down, there's nothing in it, right? And so now I need to import. So that's where that zip file that you just downloaded is gonna come into play. So you need to find where that zip file is, unzip it, you'll get a folder. Actually, you won't get a folder, it'll just have about five presets in there and you're gonna now import them. So to do that, so you're going to right click on the time-lapse folder and then you're gonna select import. Now. In that folder that you unzipped, there should be five presets there, one for every different style of frame rate that you can do, right? So 23.97, 24, 25, if you're PAL, 29.97 um, um, is NTSC, and then 30 frames per second. So you can pick from, you know, there's five presets there, more than enough uh, to cover any video project. Then we're gonna select all of them, and I'm gonna hit import like that. And then now we have all of those presets already there. And then since this is a 24 frame per second video, I'm gonna click 24 FPS. And then I'm gonna come down here to export video and I'm gonna click export video. And then I'm gonna choose the video preset that I want here. So if I wanna export it at full HD, I can do that. Uh, I've already done that once, but I will show you how to do it again. Um, You'll notice that I'm not touching anything over here. Um, and that's because I've already done this before, so the presets are already, you know, it's already defaulted to the last thing I did, but let's go through this really quick. So for the 24 FPS time-lapse, you'll see that it's already enabled zoom to fill frame. If I turn that off, I get a little bit weirdness going on here, so I'm just gonna click that again. I'm already in 16 by nine format, but um, I don't know why that's doing that, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, I don't need to enable anything else, so stroke border off, cast shadow off, guides off, identity plate, watermarking, stars, overlays, all off. Color wash, background image, intro screen, and ending screen, again, all off. If you wanna add music to this, this is the time to do it. You can add music to this, and then when it exports, it will lay that, that audio bed directly underneath the video. More importantly, depending on how many pictures you added, you'll see at the very bottom of this uh, view area here that you'll see that it says 41 seconds. So slide one of 1,005, 41 seconds. So at 24 frames a second um, with 1,005 frames, I get 41 seconds of video, which is pretty cool. Um, that's a lot of time lapse. Uh, that I can choose from if I'm gonna use a small clip of that in a video that I'm gonna produce for something else. Um, I'm not gonna choose anything else. Um, you might be wondering why the quality here is standard, but this is just for playback. I mean, you can enable high if you want, it's fine. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and then we can click export video. Then you just name the file, click the video preset. So you can see here 1080p if you want full HD and then name it and save it. So I'm gonna name mine um, Iceland DC3, uh, and then I'll put a dash one here because there's another one already there, and then I'm gonna hit save.
So then you'll see in the top left hand corner of your screen that it's going to export the slideshow as video and put it exactly where you wanted it to go. This will take some time depending on your computer. Um, so just sit back and wait for it or go out and have a sandwich and come back when it's ready to go. All right, so the slideshow is done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that file that it created and I'm going to show you what it looks like. OK, so I'm using a VLC media player um, and we're going to put that over here. I'm going to open this up and then show you what our slideshow looks like. So there we go, our slideshow in 24p. It's a little choppy. It looks a little better at 30 frames per second, um, <clears throat> at least to my eyes, but that might just be my screen refresh rate. But all in all, there we go. Beautiful time lapse in full HD. If you like the video, hit subscribe. There's always a wealth of knowledge to be shared in photo and video. My name is Scott Donchikowski. You can find me on Instagram at Denim Suit Photo. See you later, guys. Happy shooting.